called the October 7, 2014 meeting of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners to order. This time I'll call upon Commissioner Renee Griffith for our invocation. Ms. Griffith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we have together as free citizens. We know that there are many people around the world that do not experience the blessings and privileges that we have that come with freedom. And with those freedoms, we know the responsibilities that come with those freedoms. We ask you that you give us wisdom tonight as we make decisions, that you give us clarity of mind. We thank you for the men and women who have served to protect those freedoms. We thank you for the people in this county that work hard to make this a great place to live. We ask your continued blessings on this county, our decisions in this country. We thank you for your goodness that you have given us. We ask all these things in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and pledge allegiance to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Mr. Smith, I'll call on you at this time, sir. Or do you have any adjustments of the agenda from the staff this evening? Mr. Chairman, I do. Uh, we're going to remove item E under public hearings, and that's the request for the text amendment. Okay. And I have two additions. One would be under appointments before the board, and this would be memo A, and this is a presentation of proclamation for Rumblequake 3 day. And under closed session, need to add an economic development item under General Statute 143-31811A4. That was for economic development. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we're going to present that proclamation this evening. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's um, memo A. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Are there any other adjustments uh, coming from any members of the board this evening? If not, I would move that we adopt this agenda with the adjustments offered by the county manager. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We'll move to appointments before the board and Mr. Burgess Bailey, I believe Commissioner Griffith yes. sponsored this. I did. Um I just have Mr. Bailey come on up if you would and you can sure. <laughs> I had the privilege of meeting Burgess several years ago and he works very hard to raise awareness for veterans and uh, does all that he can to honor them. And he has a, a day in November that he honors the veterans and we'd like to just recognize him for his efforts. Whereas during the stay over, all over the state of North Carolina during Veterans Day weekend, many ceremonies will be held recognizing all veterans. And whereas the beginning of this motorcade is in the National Cemetery Annex in Salisbury, North Carolina, and whereas this motorcade will travel along Highway 70 to downtown Statesville, North Carolina, continuing along North Center Street to Bailey Farm Road and ending at the Bailey Hills Community of Statesville, North Carolina. And whereas this is the North Carolina Veterans Motorcade to honor, to acknowledge, honor, and remember all veterans, but dedicated to those who served during the Vietnam era. And whereas the, at the end of this motorcade will be the North Carolina Moving Wall, listing all of the North Carolina Vietnam casualties. And whereas at the end of this motorcade will be a special memorial display of the photographs of the North Carolina veteran Vietnam casualties. And whereas for all those veterans who served in the Vietnam War, finally this will be, I'm sorry, this will be the parade you always deserved but never had. Now therefore the Iredell County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim Saturday, November 8th, 2014, Rumble Quake 3 Day in Iredell County and commend its observance to all its citizens. We adopt this this evening, and Burgess, I appreciate your efforts on behalf of the Vietnam veterans and doing what you can to recognize them for their service, and we're honored to give you this, um, this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. 
This play on the word proclamation. And with that in mind, I'm going to proclaim that right there of what we're doing with these guys. Here's why we're doing it. Every 65 minutes, you have a better for this suicide. Almost 70% of those are 50 years and over. So, with that in mind, cause an ounce of prevention worth a pound of year. We're trying to reach as many of those as we possibly can. So, I just thank you all for setting the pace. Because, you know what I would like to say? The governor has declaimed this North Carolina <coughs> from a quick day across the state of North Carolina. I just happened to receive the one from you all first. I thought to get that one tomorrow. Congratulations. So you all are setting the pace for those guys right there. Well, we, so thank you. We appreciate what you do. We do. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Move to public hearings now. <clears throat> the first one will declare the meeting to be in a public hearing is we have a request from the tax assessor to conduct a public hearing for the pr proposed 2015 uniform schedules of, a, of value standards and rules market and present use. Uh, Mr. Smith, my understanding is we'll hold the public hearing this evening and then we will actually adopt these standards on the 21st. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anyone? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Good evening. I, I was just here in case there are any questions. Okay. If there's, is there anyone who wishes to speak in regard to this matter? These are the standards by which the staff will arrive at the, uh, the value in your, of your property in the forthcoming reevaluation process. If you have any questions, we have staff here willing to answer those questions, or if you have any comments, they're welcome. Okay, looks like you got a short night. Okay, if not, we'll declare the public hearing to be closed. All right. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, next we have a request from Horace Howard and Celeste Neal, T.E. Carriker, Jr., Mitchell and Melanie Belk, Bradley and Phyllis Belk, and Nancy Belk to release zoning and subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville. Mr. Todd. <coughs> Good evening to the board. Uh, the first request here is for the release of the property outlined in red. You can see it on the screen. Shepherd Elementary is on this property to give you a point of reference. You can see uh, existing Mooresville jurisdiction down here in the crosshatch. And they're proposing to do a residential subdivision on these tracks with a density of about two units per acre. As opposed to what the county has in place, this would result in approximately 43 additional lots over what the county requirements are. Uh, this is the uh, future land use plan calling for the area to be medium density residential, which in the plan is essentially uh, two units per acre. And I'd be happy to answer any questions from the board. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Todd? Is there any plans to, for this to be annexed by the city of Mooresville? Uh, yes, I believe there are plans to be annexed. And again, that process works. The town essentially does it once a year in July. So this one, for all practical purposes, will be heard next year for annexation into the town. Do you know if they've submitted any formal plans to the town or just? Uh, actually, the uh, WSP sales, they do have a site plan tonight, a concept plan that they could share with you. Okay. Got copies here. Uh, 
I'd point out this is just a uh, concept plan. Right. Mr. Todd, what, what would them annexing change if we approve this tonight, if they decided to annex it? Say that again. <clears throat> What would that would 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 we hinder anything Morsel was going to do if they annexed it next year? Uh, by releasing it, no. It's just giving them additional months to start the process. If if the release is not approved, essentially they'll just wait till the release or until the annexation in July occurs to start the development. Okay, any other questions? Okay, folks, this is a public hearing and we have a number of people who wish to sign up so, uh, so that we can proceed in an orderly manner. I'm gonna call your name and uh, you can come up and state your name for the record. First one we have is uh, Randy Gibson. You come to the podium, please, sir, and state your name. Randy Gibson. Thank you. Good. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I wish we weren't here tonight you know, making a plea. And it's our prayer that you hear our plea for tonight. We are Randy and Kay Gibson. We reside on the uh, southwestern side of the property that's uh, being proposed. We moved to the property we own now seven years ago to get away from another area in Iredell County that was becoming overcrowded. We are natives to Iredell County. We built our home in our county in Iredell County based upon the zoning ordinances of Iredell County. We had, enough pro we had to have enough property in order to drill our own well and install our own septic tank. This is also true for the majority of, of the residents of this county. And this simple requirement provides a limiting factor for the amount of houses that can be built per acre. Allowing the town of Mooresville to intrude within this, within this rural area of Iredell County will allow developers to build. Now, I know it was said differently, but I've, we've all seen it. They can be done three to five houses per acre. That may not be in the planning, but that is a possibility. And that's greater than the normal zoning requirements of Iredell County. Overcrowding will be devastating to our community and to our way of life. We enjoy being able to watch the stars at night. Overcrowding will produce light pollution. We also enjoy the peacefulness of our area and overcrowding will bring noise and pollution, noise pollution to our area. Overcrowding will also disrupt the wildlife that lives in our community. Overcrowding will bring additional pollution from runoff to our streams and creeks. Our schools, which was Shepherd Elementary, will be overcrowded. <clears throat> overcrowding will bring an increase of crime, domestic violence, trespassing, and other lawless acts. The influence of over 300 houses will bring to our community an increase of traffic, thus disrupting our normal commutes. The entrance onto Highway 21 will become a traffic hazard, therefore endangering the residents of our community. As residents of a rural community, we enjoy certain rights and privileges that people that live within the town of Moores will have laws against. We enjoy the freedom, and in your prayer tonight, we spoke about freedom. But we enjoy the freedom of being able to hunt on our property, 
We enjoy the freedom to be able to shoot our handguns, our rifles, and shotguns. We can also shoot bow and arrows and slingshots. And I add bow and arrows and slingshots because there are ordinances in the town of Mooresville that are against these, these things. <clears throat> we ride horses and four-wheelers. We have chickens and livestock. With the encroachment of the town of Mooresville and its ordinances, we are in danger of losing these rights and privileges. The owners of this property have the right to sell, but the buyers should be under the same codes and ordinances as the citizens of Ardell County that live in any rural area of the county for any type of development. There's nothing special about this land that should allow it to become under the jurisdiction of the town of Morsel. There are numerous negative aspects for the citizens affected by creating the subdivision under the codes of the town of Morsel as compared to the extra monetary gain of a few individuals that are requesting a change in the law. If allowing the town of Morsel to develop this property just for the love of money, then it is done by cheating every citizen of this county that has abided by Ardo County zoning ordinances, ordinances and planning standards. It is the responsibility of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners to protect the citizens of rural Iredell County from massive overcrowding and from the encroachment of the town of Mooresville. We thank you for your time. Thank you. thank you, sir. Can I ask him to point uh, which parcel is yours? You said on the southern side? We're on the southwestern side. We are, see the little knots on the corner down there? Mm -hmm. That is us. We're just to the, to the, we're just to the west of that corner. Any other questions? No, oh, sure. Again, thank you. Thank you. Larry Lawing. <clears throat> We have a number of people who signed up. I'm gonna go down the list here. If you would, go ahead and start making your way toward the front in the interest of time. Next, we have Susan McCarter, Brad Belt, and Kelly Griggs. If any of you folks could go ahead and begin to make your, make your way toward the front, please. <clears throat> Mr. Lawley, you may proceed. My name is Larry Lawley, and I live on uh, Milo Lane. And, uh, where the little thing comes out there. And this young man ahead of me, he, he, he told it pretty much like it is, except for one thing. Highway 21 has about got all the uh, traffic it can handle. We can't hardly get out of our driveway at certain times of the day now unless somebody stops and lets you out. Uh, we just can't. The, the traffic is already too much. And uh, all those houses going in there is really going to ruin our community completely. And that's about all I can add to what he had to say because he covered about all of it, except for the traffic. Thank, Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Susan McCarter. Hi, uh, I'm Susan McCarter, and I'm the daughter of Howard and Celeste Neal who cannot be here due to health reasons. Uh, I want to start off by saying that I understand the concerns of the people in the community. I grew up off Brawley School Road. And when Brawley School Road was dirt, or the roads off of Brawley School Road were dirt, and we were routes, we didn't have streets, but things change and change is not always bad. Uh, my family has farmed this land for better than 65 years. My grandfather, my daddy, my uncles. Uh, 
I took a little bit of offense by the indication that this was a decision that we made lightly. It was not. And my family, if we could afford to keep this land and just let it lay there and do nothing, we would. But our parents are all in their 70s and they are no longer able to farm it. And we need to sell this property to take care of our family. Uh, they've, my family, almost all of us, have spent our entire lives in Ardell County. And paying taxes, supporting the community, and like I said, if, if we could have left it, we would. But now, it's time to take care of our parents uh, because they need it. And we, we just can't, you know, we can't keep it the way it is. Uh, we tried to make this decision with what we felt was best for the community. Uh, we didn't jump on the first person that came along and offered to buy the land. We chose somebody who we thought was going to, to enhance the community, to build a beautiful development with nice homes and lots of green space, something that would improve um, the area and, and the people in the surrounding area. Um, like I said, my family's been there for 65 years, m longer than most of these people have even lived there. You know, they all moved in. They bought property and, and moved in, which is great, but now we're trying to do what's best for, for our family. Uh, I appreciate your time and your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Brad Bell. Good evening. My, <clears throat> my name is Brad Bell. And uh, all I want to say is that, uh, pretty much like Susan said, she's my cousin. We, uh, I, I, I'm 53 years old and I've, I've lived on, this, on the farm my entire life. And um, over the past four years, I've lost an aunt, a father, a brother, and an uncle. And uh, her uncles, as uh, <clears throat> has become where he can't farm the land anymore. And it's, just, it's too much for me and my brother to take care of all that land as it is. And it's like she said, we, we just want to do it just so we can take care of our, the remaining family that we have. Thank you. Yes, sir. Kelly Griggs. Hello. Um, my name is Kelly Griggs, and I live um, in that little speck right there on the bottom side of the property on the south side. And my house is about less than 50 feet away from the property line. And I understand the seller's point of view, and they have the right to sell their property. And I understand that they need to provide for their family, and this is their family's inheritance. Um, but at the same time, we are just, I'm particularly against the annexing of Mooresville, to having Moores, the city of Mooresville as my neighbors. Um, as Randy Gibson said, we do enjoy a lot of liberties of like, you know, target practice with our handguns. I have chickens. You know, our kids are outside playing all the time and, you know, just living, we can, just living that close to the city of Mooresville, I'm afraid it's going to infringe on some of my rights. And, you know, I built my house two years ago and I followed all the county rules when it comes to septic, well, um, road frontage, everything, and just basically just want the same, if you're going to develop the land, that's fine, but just have the same standards as I did two years ago. And just the overcrowding of the, the, the traffic, you know, I concur with the gentleman who spoke earlier. I have children in Shepherd Elementary School, and I live about five minutes away from the school. And every morning it takes me about 20 minutes to get to school because of the traffic on the road. Because you have people going to school, and the, I don't know if you've seen this Shepherd Elementary, that they're pretty close to the road and they don't have a whole lot of space to get into. So a lot of the traffic is backed up on 21 most mornings and afternoons during school time. And right now, the shepherds, they have a perfect amount of classroom space where the kids 
or there's about 20 kids per teacher. Teacher, and I think an influx of that, which is you know, the, there's so much, there's only so much space that Shepherd can grow on that particular piece of property since it's been there for years, and the community has kind of grown up around that. And if we add more children to that school, you know, where's the the space for the kids? And getting in and out of that school is going to be even harder. Um, I do appreciate the time to speak, and I, you know, I, I love being out in the area, and Arundel County is beautiful, and I think it's just a nice place to have a nice treasure, that, that area. There's a lot of farms in the area, and it's just nice to have a, a piece of morsel. We're not in the city, but it's just we're so close, and, it's, and everyone who comes by loves, you know, the rural area. And even though there would be, if there was a development there, there would be, you know, just the too many houses on one spot. That's the, um, the issue that I'm, I'm against at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Bradley M. Griggs. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, I am, that was my wife that spoke before me. We live in the same house. <laughs> uh, we are, I don't know if you can see my, no, it doesn't work, but we're on the south end, the little parcel with the 25 foot. All right, awesome, thank you. We're right there. And so obviously our house is about 40 feet, give or take, from the red line that is being proposed for this, um, I guess this decision. Uh, my, my sentiments very much mirror what my wife said and what Randy Gibson said. Um, we moved to the county a few years ago because we thought we'd be protected by the county. Uh, that's why we moved out there. It will not feel the same if a housing development goes right next to us and they knock down all the trees and just it will not feel like we're in the county anymore. Uh, we got a well and a septic. I think a three bedroom, two bath house you need close to an acre, maybe a little less, to do a septic and, um, I don't know, two houses an acre, it may be more than that. I don't know what's going to happen. I feel very blind to whatever is coming. I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, we're very apprehensive about it. Um, but we moved to the county just so we would not have this. So it does feel um, like an encroachment to us. Uh, I certainly don't have anything against the, the family that wants to sell their property. I don't want to offend them. I, I understand. I want them to sell their property. I just don't want it to be rezoned um, because I feel like that will change the entire feel and lifestyle that we enjoy right now. It really is a beautiful area, and we, we love living there. Um, so that's, that's where I stand. Um, I also turn left. We drive out onto Barfield Road which to go south you turn left onto Highway 21 and uh, there is a lot of traffic there. I, there's no doubt about it. Um, so I know that that will be affected greatly as well. And those are, those are my comments. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Lou Ann Stillman. Good evening and I'd like to thank you for your time. I'm Lou Ann Stillman, and I represent Thomas Carriker. Thomas Carriker is the one that started the sale of this land on our in our family. Unfortunately, Thomas can't be here to speak because he died in March, and he left it in my hands to see his will go through. Thomas Carriker was a man that was in just nothing but service. He started Shepherd's Fire Department, and this is one of his wishes that he could grant to people that didn't have a place to go for a home, that they wanted to be in the country. I think the people that have been chosen have been chosen because they do have a plan to make greenways. I personally am on the side, the southern side here. We have 11 acres we kept. There are horses there. There are chickens there. It's still farmland, and it still will be in the farm. As far as four-wheeling riding on the property, if you didn't have a 50 uh, acre of land, obviously you were encroaching on my land and riding over our land and over the fences, which is a real problem, was a real problem. My father wanted to see it sold, 
and we want his wish to be go through if <coughs> it be your will. And I thank you for my time. Thank you, ma'am. Steve Bailey. Good evening. Hope you all are doing well. I'm Steve Bailey and I'm with WSP. He was the engineer hired. We did the plan that's before you. And uh, just to address a couple of the concerns that were raised, I'd like to reiterate that once again, this is substantially similar to a plan if it stayed under the current zoning. I think uh, Matthew had mentioned 43 additional lots. Going into Mooresville would allow us to use the sewer and the water as opposed to the septic and the well, which we think is a benefit to everybody environmentally. So we're not substantially changing the density that would be allowed anyway. Um, we've, we've met with Mooresville and the R2 is, is the plan that we plan to go with. So I know there's been mentioned that there might be three to five lots per acre and that's not the case. I don't think this land would allow it. As you can see on the plan, there are significant streams and 100 foot stream buffers each side of each stream. So really it allows for a nice potted area. Um, as to the traffic, we will be, be doing a traffic study that will take into account the additional traffic brought on by the lots. So there will, I don't know what those improvements will be yet, but I'm sure there will be significant improvements in the area. Whatever, whatever impact the, this new traffic causes will be mitigated by traffic improvements. So other than that, I'd be happy to answer any planning or engineering questions about, about the plan we've got before you. Mr. David, I, I know you, I don't know how much you worked on the financial side of this thing. How, what period of time do you think for total build out on this? Any estimate? Have you talked 360 about? lots. <clears throat> Five years. Yeah. Five years. Okay. And, 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 and I, I hesitate to say this, I don't want to sound like a threat, and I know, I know you all have a very important decision, but I mean, I know the folks, you know, this, this would be annexed. This is just something for the family. So, so, so the folks that are under contract can go ahead and get started. So I want the folks that are here in opposition realize that it, that, you know, that, that this is just to help them close on a property and get and allow us to start working with Mooresville and getting the ball moving a little bit quicker. Yeah, if we deny this tonight, it'll still be annexed. It would just, no one could buy it and uh, their contract would not last till next July. So they would lose this potential buyer. Um, not to say that somebody else wouldn't step up or they wouldn't get an extension, but, but certainly for this family's sake, I, I think, you know, allowing them to do this six months, seven months, eight months earlier would, okay. would be the right thing to do. Well, thank you for entertaining my question, Jeff. I believe next we have Dearborns and Pedwells. Hi. Um, I really hadn't planned anything to say. Listening to all of our neighbors, it's an emotional issue. Um, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware that this was a done deal. I didn't realize that this was just uh, determining when it was going to happen. Um, we're going to be sad to see the Belks go. They've been good neighbors. We actually have this little piece of property that um, is between Shepherd's School and the entry to the property. Um, my mother's family has born and raised in Mooresville as long as there has been a town of Mooresville. I'm sorry. We live in a home that my grandfather's built. My parents are elderly and the thought, um, and they're in ill health, and the thought of five to seven years of construction going on around them I don't know how they would withstand that. Um, it's a change of everything we love. It's a change of our way of life. And I'm born and raised there. It's, it's, I'm really sorry. It's obviously deeply upsetting. It's more than property values or tax values, although we do have those concerns. Um, I'm a little confused about why this development is planned for here because there are so many subdivisions within five miles of this area that are just sitting there dead. On Shinville Road, which is close to this area, there's a beautiful subdivision that was started a few years ago and it literally just has gates across the front. It was never developed. Um, Wheatfield, a few miles from there, one house, never developed. Gabriel Estates, we have friends that are trying to sell their home homes in there and they won't sell. So um, 
we are afraid that we're going to have a similar situation here with this beautiful piece of property um, that's overdeveloped and then ruined. And then our way of life and everything we love and everything that we have worked for, my parents, my grandparents, and now my husband and I are working to maintain this piece of property. So it's upsetting. Um, as a, Again, the Belks are wonderful people, and we don't want them to not be able to do what's best for their family. We're just horrified by the thought that it's going to be overdeveloped to this extent. Um, I don't really know how the traffic could be fixed, because even if they widen the road, it would mean bulldozing through a structure that we own. There's really no way to widen the road there that I'm aware of. Um, so it just, it seems like there's a, a tremendous amount of problems that are going to come with developing this property in the way that's being outlined. And um, it's, it's very upsetting for, for all of us in this community. So um, thank you for your consideration and thank you for allowing us to speak. Thank you, ma'am. My wife, uh, Barbara Pedwell <clears throat> Dearborn and Michael Dearborn, I moved in. I wasn't born and raised here. I've been here for over 15 years and obviously love living in and near Mooresville. I love the rural community, um, but again, as a citizen of Iredell, I have my concerns about a development of this magnitude. I'm personally a victim of fraudulent lending practices from Visa Home Developments. I want a settlement because they were using my mortgage payments in Wall Street. We're all aware of the impact of uh, subprime mortgage lending. And people like myself who moved into a development very similar to this, thinking they're going to get a piece of the American pie for a very small down payment. However many years later it is, I'm still trying to gain my economic balance and a place peaceful enough to live without crime, without fraud. My concerns are it's not just simply selling the land, it's the amount of people we're cramming into one small parcel. When you have two homes on a one acre lot, it's, it's just too much. And like my wife said, we, we've all seen it. We see neighborhood after neighborhood fall just like this. People end up back to the bank, they get foreclosed on, their homes are lost, and personally I just don't see it as being any different. Like she said, just up Shenville there's a little gated community, uh, stone pillars with big iron gates flapping wide open. I drove down there one day just to see what it was and it was another flopped development. Um, I'm just personally sick and tired of looking at things like that. I'd rather look out my back window and see the deer and the animals and my neighbors on decent sized wooded lots. I have um, no qualms about them selling the property. I just don't understand why when people do it, they insist on cramming so many people into a small place. That's overcrowding. It's not the fact that they're trying to do something kind and care for their family and other people that want to move into the area. I just don't understand why it has to be so many. Um, I think greed factors in the personal perspective, but that's my take. Um, and a huge concern, like my wife, is the traffic, as many other people have stated. There is way too much traffic, which will result in the widening of the road, which will encroach on her business, the storefront that we have and have been maintaining and working on. And uh, I live uh, 15 minutes from work, and I have to devote at least 35 minutes to get there. Because as soon as you start having more developments like this, you have to have more traffic lights, more regulation. You have to make more highways and byways, and I'm afraid that Usually, nine times out of ten, that planning comes in after the fact. Um, and I just I appreciate your time and the opportunity to speak and uh, just state things from my point of view. Thank you for hearing me, and, and I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Mike Davidson. Mike Davidson, I'll be honest with you, I know we can't stop progress, uh, 
But I bought a piece of property on Milo Lane, right at the end there, that uh, gave me a little bit of privacy, a little bit of freedom. And the access to, that, to the property we're talking about goes, it looks like it's temporarily going through Milo Lane. And my concern is the amount of traffic that's going to be going by our place. And uh, we've got grandkids constantly playing in the woods. The property will border, my property border Shepherd School and this property. And I'm just concerned about the uh, making my little land a public thoroughfare. Thank you. Yes, sir. Warren Coulter. <laughs> For the record, my name is Warren Coulter. Uh, glad to be here so I can voice my opinion on this. Um, although we've never met, Randy Gibson and I have the same playbook. I wrote down exactly the same concerns that he has. Um, I moved to this area to be out in the countryside, and I'm not too crazy about being back in the city again. Um, the sheer size of this parcel, if you look at um, two homes per acre, you're talking 360 houses. Now, they're going to have at least two cars, and if they got kids, they're going to have four cars. Where is this traffic going to go? If you want to look at bad urban planning, stand yourself at 150 at Williamson on a Friday afternoon. Whoever authorized and designed that Morrison plantation thing never graduated from university, from urban planning. What's being proposed here in urban planning is called spot rezoning. So the net result of, oh, it's like some other people mentioned, this is, we're going to put a development here, here, and here. It's called urban sprawl. So my question is, is this part, you know, spot rezoning for the benefit of the landowners? I mean, it's, it's okay for them to sell it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And the, perhaps the tax coffers of the county? Or is it part of a bigger rural plan that I and other residents are completely unaware of would be my question. Um, it seems to be quite far from the limits of, of Mooresville. There, are, like was brought up, there are many places to build more homes. I am concerned also, like uh, Mr. Gibson said, about his, the roads, the traffic, the noise, the crime. Um, I, too, live on Milo Lane. I'm not crazy about parts of my property being annexed to make two lanes in and two lanes out so they can run over my animals that are outside. Um, I'm not sure what to think of it all. Now, this is going to sound crazy, but how about they sell the property to a farmer? I met Zonny Belk once. He used to use the access road, and I asked him, I, probably 10, 12 years ago, I asked him, I said, you know, one of my concerns, I would really not like to see a development back here. He says, it ain't going to happen as long as I'm alive. He says, once I'm gone, I don't know what's going to happen. Great progress is wonderful, but unregulated uh, progress without a serious plan, it's going to be a mess. There's no infrastructure for this area for that kind of car volume and people volume. Well, I don't know. I sure don't want to be in the area when they start putting uh, 350 cars or more into the city streets. I mean, the roads now don't match the traffic volume. What about with this? Many things to think about. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Susan Irvin. My name is Susan Irvin, and I own the property at the very end of Milo Lane, the little, little over an acre lot that is right against the red line there. Um, everyone before me has said it very well um, and pointed out many concerns that I think all of the residents around um, this proposed development um, have. Um, I would just highlight the nuisance factor um, and the traffic issue, and especially um, at least I have not been made aware of any plans as to um, what's going to happen with Milo Lane. Right now, this is a very quiet, peaceful little road. All of us purchased our property with the intent that it would remain that way. 
um, it simply, it, it, it barely <laughs> uh, can, can function with the residents that we have as far as a roadway in and out. Um, I think the estimates that have been given are, are very low, um, just with 187 uh, acres um, with two houses per acre is around 374 homes. You figure if at each family and those single family residents um, have three individuals, that's close to a thousand people. And I would say that's a small or, or you know, a low estimate of the number of people that are going to be placed in the subdivision. As many have stated, it's going to encroach on the freedoms that we have there. Um, I bought this property working my way through undergrad and law school and paid it off in the hopes of building my dream home there one day. I was born and raised in Mooresville, North Carolina. I'm a country girl at heart, and I'd like for this property to stay that way. I sympathize and can understand that these families need to sell their property, and it's what's best for their families right now. But what I'm asking you is to consider um, allowing it to remain as it is so that the people who have purchased this pro or plan to purchase this property um, have to build under the same regulations that all the folks who have purchased property there prior, um, that they will be confined and have to use or abide by those same regulations. Um, it's easy for someone to get up here and say our plan is only two acre or two homes per acre, but when it comes to someone purchasing this, purchasing this property for a substantial amount of money and maximizing their profits, Anyone can get up here and say that's the plan. Um, my concern is that that will not end up being the case, that they will be cramming in, you know, well more than a thousand people into this relatively small plot of land. Um, I don't think there's anything else that serves highlighting because you've heard it from all the ones before me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in regard to this matter? If you would, come forward. State your name. Okay. Yes, sir. To the podium, please. It'd be best, yes, sir. One second. Mr. Randy Gibson. Bailey, is it? Would you, would you come a little closer so we wouldn't be talking across the room? We've heard something very disturbing here tonight also about annexation. What gives Morsel the right to annex his property? And it's kind of talk like it's a done deal. Uh, my question to the county commissioners is, can you allow this to happen or can you stop this from happening? Annexation is not a very pleasant word in the area in which we live. And it, it's very disturbing to us as residents of that area to, to hear that word being used and saying, come July next year that Moores is going to annex this. We never had any idea that that was part of this project or even on the horizon uh, again is very disturbing and we'd like to know if you can tell us what our rights are and what we would have to do in order to as a community to see if we can keep that annexation from happening if it if this does not move forward mr. Todd could you speak to that and let him Educate us about the process and the um, the request before tonight. It's a it's an owner driven process. So the owners of the property have gone to Mooresville and, and started a process for annexation. So so the town is not coming out. They're, they're doing they're only doing voluntary annexation. They're not doing involuntary annexation. Um, so so again to answer your question with with the towns. Um, the commissioners actually, when it comes to the annexation, don't have any say so. Um, the, the ETJ process, we have a little bit of an input, but again, you just delay the inevitable. If Mooresville, which they already have sewer going up to Shepherd School, um, 
So the infrastructure is already in. So again, the annexation, because it's voluntary, um, there, there's really nothing that the commissioners can do. Is there anything that we can do as citizens? I mean, we have rights, and uh, it's just, you know, what's our future? Uh, well, you know, uh, unfortunately, I don't like change more than anybody else, but North of Mortal and South of Mortal, that's the next frontier for development. And, and this is just the start of it. We've heard it multiple times over the last couple months. Development is cranking back up, and you're going to see these areas start developing. And all the municipalities in the town, they start growing. They annex on the voluntary basis. Um, so unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the county is going to become more dense. We're going to see a lot more subdivisions, um, especially in the south end. I appreciate everything you guys have said about my family, how we're money hungry. But you know, I'm 56 years old, and I've heard people say, I've lived there 12 years. Do you think for one minute, my family has not cried over this land and know what to do with it? If you were in my shoes, standing here in front of the ladies and gentlemen, and you were trying to do this for your family, what makes it any different? You talk about us being encroaching on the development encroaching on your land. How many of you have played in those woods? How many of you have rode four wheelers? How many of you have cut fences? I know it's not everybody that's here. This has happened. My father worried and worried over this stuff. And it is very near to my heart. I cried over it. I didn't want to sell it. But you know, we have to move on. And as a family, we have to move on. <clears throat> we did not want industry to come here. And that's one of the things that could come is industry in a flat this large. We'd rather see single family homes come to this land and be able to enjoy it like we did. And as far as the trees, there's already been an offer to cut all the timber off the land. And we chose not to take it. So when all these things are said about how we don't want this and we don't want that, you know, you're, not sing I'm, you're singing to the choir. I've been there for 56 years. I'm going to live right beside it. And it hurts me. You Y'all have hurt me to think that I'm not your neighbor. And I'm sorry I've gotten emotional about this, but I would consider, love you to consider to do this, because otherwise our family will probably go to another route. And as far, as far as selling it to a farmer, I'd love to sell it to a farmer. But what if it's a hog farmer, a pig farmer? What if it's a chicken farmer? Have you ever been around that? It smells to high heaven. And there ain't a whole lot you can do for it. So what we're trying to do is help the community and have a nice, decent place to live. And that's all I've got to say. And if I've hurt people's feelings, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. All right. Just a second, ma'am. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak who has not already spoken? Okay, I'm going to let you speak, ma'am, and let's, let's try not to get into a debate here. Let's just... I understand. Speak. Yes, ma'am. And I want people to understand me. My name is Kay Gibson. Randy Gibson is my husband. He spoke for us both, but I don't know if everybody knew that I am Kay Marlowe Gibson. My mom and dad has lived... I've, I lived there for 20-some years on my mom and dad's property that's where we got our property and kelly and griggs kelly griggs got their property it's family property and i uh 
I came back home. I lived away. I lived in Lower uh, Ireland County, and I moved back home to be on our family property and to be close to my mom and dad again. So I'm, I'm not wanting to get into debate about anything, but all of the my mom and dad owns. Uh, we join uh, there at the corner, right over there. And they have, they did have 48 acres, you know, and they've, they're splitting it up between our, us children so we can all have family property. And that's what we like to have is rural family property. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. No one else wishes to speak. We'll declare this public hearing closed. And the floor is open for a motion or discussion. It's your pleasure. You know, um, a couple years ago, the legislatures made some changes so that count that cities could not come in and and do mass annexations, but they did not take the right of the property owner to request annexation. And that is what's happened in this case is that the property owners have requested annexation. And I understand the angst about being inside the city of Mooresville. I don't live in the city of Mooresville, and I don't ever care to. Nothing against the city of Mooresville, but I'm, that's not my interest either. But unless the residents around that area go to the city of Mooresville and ask for annexation, um, Mooresville will not be coming to your door under the way that the law is currently structured. So I don't know what the decision of this board will be, but I just wanted to let the landowners around know that Mooresville is not going to come and, and annex you unless you go and ask, and then it goes through this process. So I hope that gives some of you some peace of mind, regardless of this decision that's made here or the one in, in July. But you do have some protection from the city of Mooresville coming in and annexing you into the city limits. That's all I wanted to say. Go ahead, Ken. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> um, I've been making notes about stuff to say. Uh, these kind of uh, cases are, are most, most difficult. Because really, the, really, if you boil down, boil down to it, what this is about is, is what happens when a farmer decides he doesn't want to be a farmer anymore. I mean, that's really what this is about. You know, if you buy a house that's next to a nice, beautiful, rolling pasture, and that's why you bought the house, then does it really obligate the guy that has that beautiful pasture? Does that mean that's all he can ever do with it? Well, you know, no, it doesn't. But on the other hand, you know, I mean, I understand that that part of the value of our community comes because the agricultural component is mixed in with uh, with the lifestyle, and and we're starting to see it go in the southern end, and and that's painful and in the northern end of the county you hear, hear a lot of folks talking about how to preserve it but the problem always becomes is what happens when when uh, when the, the farmer is getting up in years and he needs the money not the land he can't work the land and his kids uh, can't make enough money farming that amount of land and then they decide to sell it and uh, and and boy, we've been down this road many, many times in the past. It's just been a while since that's happened. Um, if I can just address a few things so that you can understand how we come to make decisions here and what we can and can't do. Um, the fact that the town of Mooresville agreed to, to annex that property into the town of Mooresville limits, the property owners did that so that they could get water and sewer and that they could put more homes in there. That makes the land more valuable. And I don't think that anybody, I don't, I don't fault anybody for wanting to make their property more valuable to sell. We would all, you know, 
that's, that's not a, a character flaw to, to want to maximize the value of something that you're selling. Um, they could develop this property without the town of Mooresville and put 307, as best I could, if I followed the numbers right, they could put 317 homes in here without the town's zoning and, and development standards, or they can put it in, put in 360 homes with their standards. And, and I would say that probably, if, if, especially if you look at the topography on around the property, um, that, you know, from a land development perspective, doing it the way they would do it in Mooresville's probably would be an advantage um, as far as probably from an environmental perspective. On the roads end of it, you're right. Uh, 21 has a, a bunch of traffic on it now. Uh, we don't widen 21, but um, we can't widen 21. And, and the State Department of Transportation just told us that about that, that there was over $70 billion worth of road needs. There was $11 billion to pay for it. So we should expect, North Carolinians should expect that 80% of our identified road improvements or highways are not going to get addressed. So, so yes, incrementally, is the traffic going to get a little bit worse or a little bit more worse? Th those are the two options. The, and, and I hate to say it, but I mean, those are the two options. I have a great deal of concern that the access to this um, is going to be at a, at a curve in the road on 21. However, you know, we have, our board has always advocated multiple points of uh, access so that, so that you're not, so, so that you don't have congestion just in one point. Unfortunately, that, that puts your, the folks on Milo Lane in a, in a place where you don't want to be. And I understand you don't, if I live there, I wouldn't want that either. So, so I mean, I, under, I understand, the cons, understand those concerns. And then finally, I, I'll tell you, I'm a Boy Scout. And the Boy Scout reservation on the northern end of that property has been there a long time, and I have uh, camped out there with uh, with with literally hundreds of uh, of boys over the years, and um, and I I can't say that I look that I, that I look forward to the back of that property. Which, if you look at the south end, I, uh, Matthew, would you mind hitting it with the with the laser pointer? I mean, I know the neighbors know where it is, but no, it's up north. It's the big area in the middle, up north. Oh, the right. Sorry. No, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Up. Uh, that's there. it. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and and and, I'll, and to the family, I'm going to tell you if if y'all if you if you noticed that there was a, a shortage of snipes in your field. That's because there were a lot of tenderfoot scouts that bagged them uh, on uh, on Saturday nights over the years, and I and I know that probably concerned you because uh, we I guess that was illegal trespassing, but um, we have a lot of, of good memories. So I understand, you know, those who spoke in opposition. I understand. Now I, I'm going to tell you what I'm prepared to do tonight is. Is I was I, we had not seen this uh, your plan, and I was really hoping that um, that maybe there wasn't going to be some de development close, that close to the scout reservation that's 150 feet away, and I can imagine uh, folks will move there and saying I didn't think that I would have to see Boy Scouts. Uh, you know, with all those fires so close to my yard, they're going to set my house on fire. They they make noise late at night. Um, they don't always use the portage on. Uh, there's all kind of things that Boy Scouts do that um, that, to be honest with you, we don't want the hassle either. 
and I look, and, and there's a lot of the property that, because of the topography, you can't build on it because it's so steep. And that has protected some of the property owners that are in the northeast corner, I guess. <clears throat> but, but the ones on the far west are, are certainly going to be impacted. Um, So where I am right now is, uh, is I'll tell you, I, I, you know, in July, you can develop it just like this, and there's nothing that this board can do to stop you. And if you want to do that, you can. Um, I would be willing to table this, and if y'all could come back with some, an alternative plan that made sure that we weren't going to have some conflict between um, between the scouts and in your subdivision, then, then you know, then I may be willing to. I, I'd be willing to, to to let this go ahead and move, and, and just so the property owners understand, we cannot stop this. This is this is going to happen. We cannot stop this. So all all we can do is try to mitigate some of the some of the impact. And then the other part that I would ask is that um, is I'm not sure Did, was a traffic study already done about the access point? No, it will be required by the next okay. step in the process. Okay. All right, but but I would say I you know I have concerns about the access point being on the curve, but on the flip side of it, you don't want to dump everybody on Milo Lane either. Um, I, I would just say there's some unanswered questions that, uh, unanswered questions there. So uh, it, it, at this point, if, if the family would, wants to consider that, then I'd be willing to table this. If the family doesn't want to consider this, I'll vote against it. Could the traffic study, the outcome of the traffic study, that could impact the amount of houses that go in the development, is that correct? Yeah. Or it could force um, different routing of traffic, correct? Well, what it would do is because of the number of houses, it could increase the number of improvements that were made. It may make it a financial decision to make it. Okay. Would it cause a problem to ask to have the tra how long would a traffic study take to have done and get back with us before waiting on more to ask for it? Well, I understand uh, the investors may not want to. And I understand the apprehension of right and not knowing whether you're going to be able to uh, develop the land, why would you want to invest? I mean, I understand the rub on both ends. If, if we agree to some kind of heavily landscaped location buffer along that northern border between the lots and... What, can I ask, Mr. Todd, do we have any authority to, to ask for a buffer on this property? Is it, can we place conditions on the release of, of jurisdiction? I think you can ask for certain things, but there would be no requirement as it moved along that they actually met those requirements. Okay, so what you, if you could have a new site plan brought back, and again, there's nothing in place that would lock them down to that site plan. Right. I mean, I understand the, the concerns from both parties, and I, and I agree with Ken and Renee both that the, the property owners have a right to do what they want to do, just like if any of you came before us wanting to request annexation into Mooresville for your property, we wouldn't want to deny that. However, we, it's our obligation where possible, where legal, that we try to look out for all the property owners as far as safety, security, you know, in and out of the, the areas, and you know, it's not a laughing matter. I'm kind of offended that you laughed at my question, but you know, it's an emotional situation for all these people. So uh, some people are in it for economic gain and some people are in it because their family needs to sell it. I understand that. So 
from that perspective, we can't require uh, a buffer we can request, but I want you to know your, your concerns are considered very heavily. But it, as they said, it's going to happen one way or the other. Um, it's a shame that that has to be that way, but that's unfortunately the legal way it is. Okay, any other discussion? <clears throat> Your pleasure. The floor is open for a motion. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to deny the request. What? All right. Hey. Any discussion on that motion? Can I can I ask the fa if the family is willing to consider making making some adjustments in order to in order on that northern um, section of the property? Then I'm I'm willing to vote against your motion and agree to table it and let them come back. I'll withdraw my motion and, and agree with the table if they want to consider that. What type of, uh, I want to be considered of everybody involved, what type of time frame or is there a compressed time frame that the family is operating under here with someone? I'm in, motion, I'm in favor of the motion to release it simply because it is going to happen in July. And there are people who have um, this development is going to happen. You know, I, I'm, I'm just asking for a little consideration in order to, to, to get some, have, in order for, in, you know, for some speed, okay? And we so. have no, they could give us all the assurances that they want. I mean, that we would want, but there is nothing that would bind them to do. Except their word. Except their word. May I say something? Sure. Could it come to the mic? Yeah. To the mic. Uh -oh. First of all, the scout camp you're speaking of is owned by a group of people. It is not the BSAs because we were told that if it was the BSAs, it would have already been sold. It is, was left by several men that are deceased now um, to be used by the Mooresville area Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. That property does have trees on it. And it's not, I mean, it's wooded, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a field that backs it up. So there's, I mean, there's nothing, we're not, gonna, the trees are there in the Boy Scout, if that's what your concern is. It, all you have to say is no, you're not interested in doing that. If you're not interested in doing that, we've got a motion, we'll vote. If, if I'll have to ask the rest of the family. With something, then. I mean, you're talking about trees and if it's gonna happen anyway, um, I'm sorry. But uh, what okay. do y'all say? You want to come back in 30 days? No, no, I'm not asking for it to be touched. I'm, what I don't want, what I'm trying to avoid is having, 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 I mean, that's the, the, the scouts camp on the southern edge of that property because the rest of it, I mean, it, it wasn't donated because it was primed. It was donated because you really couldn't do very much with it, okay? And the only place that the, that the there's really two spots that the boys can pitch a tent, but, and most of it is on that bottom third, so to speak, which is going to put them right in the backyards of the people who are on your northern boundary. What I'm just saying is if, if y'all don't want to come up with some sort of a, a, a buffering agreement, then 
then you can do what you want to in July, but I'm gonna, I'll vote against it tonight. I have nothing to say until they decide. some sort of a, a buffered area. Okay. Would a burn be good or you yeah, want tree? You know, you got a boy scout camp back there. You want to, you know, you want to be very conscientious of that. So, you know, I don't see that's a reason to the work for the city to try to say, hey, you have the trees, do a little tree survey, see where the trees are that we can save. Well, uh, y'all, I don't think y'all have any trees there. I think it's right now the no. soybean field. Property line is the field. Right. All the trees are boys that is correct. Okay. Is there a good? Yeah. Are there? Yeah. Are there a good stand of trees on the Boy Scouts property now? Yeah. That yeah. would act as a buffer? No, no because they are in well, those I trees. Well, somebody that lives there. No, I can't there. Well, I know, but I got you saying yes, he said no. <laughs> I want to hear from this gentleman nodding your head. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Oh, Brad Bill. Okay. Is there a stand of trees north of this property on the Boy Scout property? Just a second, sure. I'm... So we can get rid of some more trees to plant. Yeah, more yeah. Trees. if y'all come back with something like that, I'll I'll vote to table the motion. We'll hear from you. Now they're under a contract to postpone this 30 days and probably going to call the legal group. Change provisions to their contract. That's the point. That's the question I was asking a few minutes ago. Right. I always approach these things, folks, with some great degree of trepidation. I believe for a long time that the two greatest powers this board possesses are the power to tax and the power to decide what people can and can't do on their property. And I am very uncomfortable every time making these type of decisions. These are the decisions we make that most heavily impact the lives of our fellow citizens. And, they, and I... I'm very uncomfortable when we get down to the point where we're telling people how many trees they got to have on their own property. I, I, I think we're becoming to the point of almost dictatorial when we get to that level of micromanagement in regard to personal property rights. Now, I can tell you the scenario. You know, I, I don't know everything, but I've been doing this 20 years, and here's the scenario. You had a, some folks who were farming this property and they became elderly. And they became elderly to the point that their health began to fail and they couldn't farm the land and their children went off and got an education, a little bit better education than their parents had and they gave a good job and it's a job that's too profitable for them to come back and farm this land. But the alternative not selling it is to sit there and pay taxes on it and have no income off of it or if any, very little. And they'll sit there and they'll go through reevaluation after reevaluation where p other homes will move in here, the price of the property will go up, and they simply get to the point they can't afford it. It's not their desire to sell the property, they would love to keep it. They finally get to the point they simply can't afford to own it. And in 20 years, I've seen this scenario repeated several times. And, this, and I understand the folks who have moved there who don't want to see this encroachment, but also. If, if you deny these type of requests, you, we need to consider the financial hardship we're putting on the people who own the property, who at their very heart don't want to sell it. It's grandpa's land. 
but they get to the point where financially they have no alternative. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to give anybody a hard time, but I'm not going to be a party to telling somebody who owns another piece of property I don't own how many trees they got to have on their property. I think we're coming far too heavy handed when we do that. Now, if they, if they're willing to, to, uh, volunteer tonight that they'll leave a buffer of trees or they would build a burn, then I, I'm just going to have to take the word that, that they're going to do it. But uh, I think these folks, quite honestly, came here expecting a decision tonight. I think we ought to give them one. And uh, to the dismay of some and the, the pleasure of others, I support the release of the ETJ. Mr. Chair, is there, there currently is no motion on the floor. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Halp, I believe you began to the initiation of rescinding your motion. Is it still your desire to vote on that motion? or I'll withdraw the motion now, but I have something to say. The point, I understand everything you're saying. And you, you're sitting here saying we're going to protect the property owners. I'm all for property rights, and that's what I explain to these people. It's going to happen one way or the other, whether we deny it or not. But there again, from the people that's against this situation, our legislature has set up laws that are going to encroach on you when you move there, and that's just our society. That's what our country has come to. I sympathize with both sides. I, I really do. And, and my thing is Ken's not wanting to require you. I think he's asking you. So he was asking to table it for two weeks to our next meeting, I think, if that's enough time, to give you time to discuss with family members if you can – you can't be required to do that. Is that going to cause you to have a hardship for two weeks till the 21st of October if we tabled it till the 21st of October? Look, I realize I can't ask you to do anything, sir, but I would compel you to have a natural buffer rather than a fence, something that will not require maintenance. So. Okay. We just wanted both sides to understand we sympathize with both sides. We don't take either side lightly, and, and I'm all for personal property rights, so I can't in good conscience vote against what's going to happen inevitably. My point was just trying to bring both sides together and work together and be neighbors. So I'll, I was to retract my motion to deny, and I'll make a motion to accept. Okay, we have a motion. And with your assurances. i tell you what, won't you do it this way. Won't you make a motion? And in your motion, you have an understanding that there will be a natural buffer between the Boy Scout property and this property. I'll make a motion to accept as far as we can with go. your word, no, understanding legally can't obligate you, but with your word, you'll do your best to make a natural buffer between the Boy Scout area. Okay. And I hope you guys can understand. We're not voting for or against you, but the bottom line is it's personal property rights. If you were here before us, we would have to support your request also. Um, so I hope you understand that. So I'll make a motion to request with a understanding that there will be a buffer. I say we have a motion to approve the request with that understanding. Is that correct, Mr. Pettis? Yes, sir. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Yes, sir. That took a while. Mr. Todd, let's give these folks just a moment to quiet down. I just want to know what. <clears throat>
proposed use of Milo in it. Could be more Milo or? It's going to open. Good. I sit under these french fry lights. You know. Okay. She was told me that we have to give up space and for the road. That's trouble, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I think I've told you that before. Okay. So, my hand. You got three more people that's going to make that call. Right. Suck it. Craig Oberson. Craig Oberson? Okay. You're welcome. All right. We'll declare this meeting to be in a public hearing in regard to a request from Kenneth Kuntz, Brian, and Natalie Bass to rezone 4.4 acres across some 149 Houston Road Troutman from RA to GB. Mr. Todd. Uh, the property in question for this rezoning is outlined in blue. Uh, it's currently zoned residential agricultural. The request is to go to straight general business. You can see that there's uh, some existing general business directly across the road, that's Houston Road, and also there's a highway business in Troutman's jurisdiction to the west, and highway business across the interstate, and other commercial zoning in the area. Uh, staff supports this request based on the 2030 Horizon Plan calls for this area to be employment center, industrial flex office. Properties in close proximity to commercially zoned properties and potential traffic impact should not come close to the road capacity. I also point out that the uh, planning board voted nine to zero to approve this request. This is the uh, 2030 horizon plan shown the area in the employment center. This is an aerial of the property. You can see all the adjacent commercial uses. Picture looking into the subject property, west along Houston, east along Houston Road. There's some existing <coughs> commercial uses in the area. And I'd be happy to answer any questions on this one. Okay, any questions, Mr. Todd? Okay. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak either for or against this? If you would come forward and state your name for the record, please. Okay. If not, we'll declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Griffith. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. If for the record, if we could get the approval statement read. Uh, okay. We'll do that. A motion to recommend in favor of the zoning map amendment and to make a finding that the approval is consistent with the adopted 2030 horizon plan and that said approval is reasonable and in the public interest. And futures and furthers the goals of the 2030 horizon plan because it is in harmony with the surrounding area adjacent to commercially zoned property and should not exceed existing road capacity. Okay. Let's go ahead and vote on that. And make sure Mr. Mr. Todd won't have any angst there. All in favor of that, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you for the correction there, Mr. Todd. I can read the whole thing, but I did. Okay. <coughs> okay. We'll declare this meeting to be in the public hearing in regard from our in regard to a request from Michael Ricci to rezone 4.11 acres across from 800 River Highway from RA to RO. Mr. Todd. Okay, again, the uh, property for this request is outlined in blue on the River Highway. It's adjacent to some existing residential office and also some highway business zoning. And across the road is Morsel's jurisdiction with some commercial mixed use. Okay. Staff supports this request based on the 2030 Horizon Plan calls for this area to be high density residential and mixed use. The proposed district is consistent with previous approved rezoning request on River Highway, and the rezoning is consistent with the Town of Mooresville's future land use plans. 
Uh, this is the 2030 horizon plan showing the lots in question to be high density residential mixed use. An aerial of the property. And a few pictures of the subject property. Looking west on River Highway. East along River Highway. The previous one was east as well. This one's west along River Highway. This is directly across from the existing property. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions, Mr. Todd? Not. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in regard to this matter? If you would come forward, please. If not, we'll declare this public hearing closed and the floor is open for a motion. Make a motion to recommend in favor of the zoning map amendment and to make a finding that the approval is consistent with the adopted 2030 horizon plan that staff furthers the goals of the 2030 horizon plan because the amendment is in harmony with the surrounding area and the property is in close proximity to other commercially zoned properties. Okay. Any discussion on Mr. Hap's motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Yes, sir. All right. That brings us to administrative matters. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the first item we have is A, it's a request from the Finance Department to appoint two citizens to the Firefighters Relief Fund Board of Trustees, and this would be uh, for each VFD in the county. Thank you. Each year, um, the Board of Commissioners is required to appoint two members to each volunteer fire department's Board of Trustees for the Firefighters Relief Fund. This year, there were a few changes in the recommendations that came from the fire departments, and those are highlighted in green on the sheet attached uh, to the agenda memo. Um, Central Fire Department is replacing one person, or excuse me, two people, and the new appointments would be Mike Sloan and Daniel Ray. For Monticello, Jeff Herman is a new appointment, and for Shepherds, Robert Friedman is a new appointment. Okay. Any questions of Ms. Robertson? <clears throat> Not the floor is open for a motion. To approve it, Chair. We have a motion to approve these appointments from Vice Chairman Norman. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to turn items B and C over to Ben Steichleather, our ICATS director. The first is a call for a public <coughs> hearing, and the second is a request for endorsement of a funding letter. Good evening. The first item on the agenda is to call for a public hearing at the meeting on October 21st <laughs> for the rope funds that are distributed by the state every year. These are formula funds from NCDOT to cover operating costs for elderly disabled trips, employment trips, and rural general public trips. And we also utilize some of this funding for matches for federal grants. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Steichler? Floor is open for motion. Motion the... to approve. Okay. We have a motion to call for a public hearing on October 21st from Commissioner Griffith. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The next item on the agenda is to approve a formula or to send a, to approve a letter of support for a formula that will, that will become before the MPO that will allow us to receive a share of 5307 funds, which are urban grant funds that funnel through CATS. They are the designated recipient according to FTA, and so the MPO has to agree on a way to share that money. This is a formula that was devised by uh, ICAT staff and by CAT staff. Um, it's a fair formula, and it's based on how much service is actually being provided in the community. Okay. I, well, I've been to their meetings, and I would like to say that it's all very crystal clear and easily understood. Um, that would be one of the biggest <laughs> lies ever told uh, by a human being. It, it is really, really complex. In your opinion, 
do you think what ICATS is getting from this revenue source with the new, this trend towards formulas and such, do you think that we're going to come out a little bit worse, a little bit better, about the same? What do you see the trend being? Because if we need to push back, um, we don't have the votes to win. But we, but we can certainly make some noise as we go down fighting. I mean, just the way that the um, CRTPO is set up, basically if, if Charlotte can just get one other surrounding entity to vote with them, that they win. I'll, I'll address that two ways. First of all, I think that what you're seeing <clears throat> is going to be a fundamental change in the way that ICATS is funded. Right. Um, urban funding typically relies on um, a lot of local tax dollars, and we're not going to do that here. I'm fully aware of that and comfortable with that fact. So we have to change the way that we view funding. Our local funding is going to need to come from contracted revenue services. So think of ICATS, and those are the businesses that we operate with and we invoice monthly. So through this process, I think ICATS can come out stronger, but we will not be stronger because we receive 5307 money, if, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, I think that we've reached out, you know, we've, we've now contracted with the town of Mooresville. They provide revenue to us so that we can provide services for them. The city of Statesville is now on board. Mitchell Community College is an organization that now gives us revenue every year to provide some services for them. I think that's the future for ICATS. I think this is a, a good way to share this pot of money. I think what it does is it allows the money to stay with whoever is actually providing the services for the community. And that's why it's based on fleet size. It's based on the uh, ridership instead of fares, which is typical, but we take a lot of people for free because we take a lot of Medicaid patients, so forth, so on. And then the, uh, the third part is the um, revenue miles. So it's based, I think it's based where the money needs to go. Is there a potential that ICATS with a different formula could secure more funding? Yes, but I don't think that that's the future for ICATS. Personally, I'm a little wary of depending on federal funds to support ICATS totally because as you saw last October when the federal shutdown occurred, NCDOT had to shut their offices that were funded by these formula grants. If ICATS was totally funded through federal money, we would have had to shut down service for a, you know, a month. And that's not something that people we transport can afford for us to do. So I think ICATS will come out stronger. I think it's a good way to share the money. I don't think we're getting short-ended short, short ended anywhere on this formula. Um, for instance, this is a formula very similar to the way that LA metro area shares their money and they share their funds with it's 55, somewhere between 55 and 60 different organizations. And this is a conversation that's probably going to come up again as, as the Charlotte metro area absorbs more communities. You know, the, the fact is, ICATS is ahead of the curve uh, being able to secure some of this funding because we got ahead of the curve to report to the National Transit Database. So we're the only eligible entity that touches Mecklenburg County to receive this money. Otherwise, there probably would be some other voices at the table. And in the future, there probably will be. But I'm very comfortable with the formula. I think it's fair to the citizens of Iredell County. Situational awareness. I would okay. just keep your antenna up as high as you can. Yes, sir. I agree. And that's something that, because we depend on that federal money, we're always looking three, four, five years out because okay. it's, it affects us tremendously. Thank you, sir. Uh, floor is open for a motion, and they want us to in the letter of endorsement. Next motion to approve endorse a letter of support for the formula developed between ICATS and CATS that will allow ICATS to receive 5307 urban transit grant funds. Thank you, Mr. Howe. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimous. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Item D is a request from the Sheriff's Department and Rick Eads is going to represent them tonight for budget amendment number eight to accept an NC Governor's Highway Safety Grant. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to ask for budget amendment or approval of budget amendment eight to accept grants from the governor's highway safety uh, and the amount of thirty-two thousand seven hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Okay. Any questions, Mr. E? Floor is open for a motion. motion to approve. I have a motion to approve budget amendment number eight. From Vice Chairman Norman, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
Item E is a request from Garland Clower, our fire marshal, for a public hearing for the expansion of Troutman Fire BNF Rural Fire Protection District. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board. I know this has been a long night, so I think I'd put in front of you a, a package that does a lot of the explanation we're going to talk about. So to, uh, to make a lot shorter for you, we got uh, Alan Church. Y'all guys can come up a little bit if you want to. Chief of Troutman Fire Department. Uh, and Keith Troutman, Chairman of the Board of Troutman Fire Department. These guys have went out over the past several months and petitioned uh, an area that we're talking about trying to put into their fire tax board area or rural fire protection area. So uh, what they've done, just to go through your package to make it go a lot quicker for you, is the first, first page you have there is a memo that Keith put together which basically says what they have done and what they tried to do by the North Carolina General Statutes. And so that covered Troutman as far as their request to you uh, to make that consideration. The second page is where the uh, Board of Directors voted on taking that section of land into their Rural Fire Protection District that's there. The first color page that you have is the BNF and Troutman Fire Department showing the block <coughs> area is the area that's on the Fern Hill Peninsula <coughs> that uh, they want to, to absorb into the Rural Fire Protection District. And the reason they want to do that, that area right now has a 9S ISO rating, which is as high as we can have in this county except for a 10. Uh, with this adoption into this area, they will drop down to a 6 which will save them approximately 40% on their insurance funds for the homeowners and insurances. So uh, that's one of the big pluses of them doing that. Uh, the next color map shows you the actual area that was looked at and canvassed by Troutman Fire Department. The next area was a, uh, a color map. That's how they kept up with who they made contact with in the area. Uh, the green areas who they made contact and got signed petitions on. And then the letter following that uh, is from tax administration looking at the petition that they entered and basically saying that all the names on that petition are correct. So that's their verification. Uh, the next color map on the back actually shows you what, if, if approved, that this area will look like. If you notice, there's from that point on, there's only one very small section uh, that's down off of uh, Marston Farm Road that will be in the 10 that we cannot get covered uh, to get at least a 9S rating without the addition of a fire station in that area. So there's only like five properties and five houses in that area that fall into that category. And that's because of the six mile limit, right? That's the six mile limit. It's just, this may be, 300 yards past the six mile limit. Wow. <laughs> Not much at all. Mm. Uh, and then the final color map is what I will submit to Raleigh uh, for their approval before I come back to you for final approval on this. So, Mr. Chairman, what I'm asking now, if you will, is to uh, have a public hearing on this uh, annexation to a rural fire protection district for Troutman Fire Department and BNF District. Okay. We would have this public hearing in November. Fourth. That's the reason I didn't really set a date on that. I saw the ones that were scheduled for the twenty-first. If we could do it on the twenty-first, because we're not going to be meeting the first meeting in November. If you remember, that one's been canceled. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I'll keep moving things along. I make a motion to call for a public hearing on October twenty-first in regard to the expansion of the Troutman Fire Department, BNF Rural Fire Protection District. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? And uh, Mr. Troutman, Mr. Church, I appreciate you looking after these folks like this. Speaks well of them. And for the record, they located Troutman too, so that they could hand, so they could service that's, that's correct. I, I'm, these people. And, and I mean, it just shows they, these got these uh, these community leaders had the 
the will, or the goodwill of, of the people in mind when they located it and, and an extended service down in that area, and they did that before there was a vote. Yeah, so that was about they'd be fools not to vote. 2008, 2009. Yeah. And that, and that was due strictly because of that, so. Yep. Yeah. So just shows a little vision goes a long way. <laughs> just took a while. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Item F is a request from the Public Safety Division, David Salibi, to authorize the Finance Department to request driveway funding reimbursement from DOT on behalf of Union Grove BFD. And Nolan Shoemaker, the Chief for, for Union Grove, is also here tonight. Do we have the screen? Uh, this is not part of the script, Chairman, but uh, I did want to recognize Union Grove because October of 2012, Union Grove came before you asking for funding for their new fire station. And this is kind of what it looked at like about a year ago. And hopefully if this thing works, that's what it looked like today. But it's come a long way. Uh, they got a little bit of painting left on the inside. I just want to recognize them for a great job. And, and Chief Shoemaker also was the contractor on the job, and he survived that, which is rare to survive being a chief and also build your own department. One more view, but this brings me to the next slide, which is the driveway, and, and that's what you'll be look, uh, uh, looking at for tonight. But thank you, North Carolina General Statutes uh, 136-1824 authorizes NCDOT to participate in the construction of driveways for new or expansion of fire departments and EMS facilities. Union Grove Volunteer Fire Department's new facility project qualified for this reimbursement of $18,000. The reimbursement <clears throat> request however, must be made by the county on behalf of Union Grove. Once the, the request is received by <clears throat> CDOT and processed, the funds will come back to the county, which in turn will be paid directly to Union Grove Volunteer Fire Department. The action being requested of the board tonight is to authorize the county finance department to, to request on behalf of Union Grove Volunteer Fire Department the reimbursement of $18,000 for driveway improvement <coughs> Uh, for driveway improvements at Union Grove Fire Department, state new station on NC <coughs> 901 in Union Grove. I will say that uh, the $18,000, as you, I hope you read in your board packets, that would go back to Union Grove and also apply to the principal of the loan that you approved for them in 2012. Yeah. Uh, Nolan Shoemaker, Chief of Union Grove Volunteer Fire Department, will. Uh, uh, will be in attendance or is in attendance tonight and will, is here to answer any <coughs> project specific questions that you might have. Also, budget amendment nine is attached uh, to your packet for approval. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions, Mr. Salibi or Mr. Schumacher? Just, just wanted to, sorry, just wanted to say you did a good job. Keep up the good work. I just have a comment. Um, the way Mr. Shoemaker's seven-year-old son beat up on our football team that my seven-year-old son played on two Saturdays ago, I'm not so inclined to support the measure. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Motion denied. I know right? it. I mean, he, they beat up on us pretty bad. Well, sitting here having to listen to us talk for almost two hours is pretty much a disincentive for much such endeavors, wouldn't you think, Mr. Sheetmaker? But I <laughs> appreciate your persistence. And when are you going to have a ribbon cutting up there? Because I think I'm due a free meal off you sometime in the future. <clears throat> I look forward to uh, having the ribbon cutting. I'm, we're trying to work it out with the bank, the bank that provided the financing for the fire department. Uh, was kind enough to uh, financially support the ribbon cutting and the food. So it will, I will be in contact with you at a later date as soon as okay. we can get a date set for that. And I would invite each and every commission member and Mr. Smith and all other county uh, employees to come okay. to the ribbon cutting. Okay, thank you, sir. Have a talk with your son, too, before the next football game. <laughs> all right. All right. 
All right. Floor is open for a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Chairman Norman. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Item G is a request from the Sheriff's Office for Eads again uh, to approve budget amendment number 10 to accept a 2014-15 JAG grant. Good afternoon again. Yes, I'm requesting a approval for the budget amendment number 10 to accept 2014-15 justice assistance grant funds in the amount of $16,384. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Eads? Not. Floor is open for a motion. Motion approved. I have motion approved from Commissioner Hap. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> Item H is a request from Allison Wood, Allison's Woods Outdoor Learning Center to partner with Iredell Statesville Schools and consider the donation of a modular classroom to be used for educational purposes. And the role that the county has in this request is that they are actually asking for some assistance in the setup costs of this particular um, unit. Uh, there is a septic, septic system already on the property, but I believe these costs are going to be for the actual setup of the um, of the modular unit itself, and I'm, my, I'll see the any comments that you might have, Chairman Johnson. Um, you might know a little bit more about this than, than I can provide. Yeah, the the uh, what the uh, these costs will cover the transportation of the mobile unit there, whatever fine grading has to be done, the application of the skirts, any ramps, reconnecting the power and hooking it up to water and septic. So it's pretty much a turnkey deal. Uh, we don't have a firm price yet because Kenny Miller has folks that he contracts with to do this and they haven't been out to look at it, but uh, Selena Gooden, who I spoke with at Allison Woods, would like for us to go ahead and at least make preliminary approval so she can proceed with some of the logistical matters that she has. And uh, so that's the reason it's on the agenda tonight. And uh, I'll entertain any questions if anybody has any. I just wanted to make, um, for funding origin, I think I'd said it needs to come out of the Commissioner's Contingency Fund. Yeah, that'll be fine. I had a question. Yes, sir. Originally, my understanding was they were going to allow them to use this modular classroom. This says donate. My understanding is they're going to allow them to use it. They're going to donate the use of it. I don't think they're going to give it to them. Just the use of it. Right. Okay. I just want to clarify that because right. that was purchased with tax dollars and right. it's got to have some kind of monetary value. Right. <clears throat> that was my request. But that this, was, to be sure now, the schools are going to use this too in addition to Allison Woods. The okay. schools have courses out Primarily there. for the schools. Right. Yeah. Right. I just so know in the past the school history. system has sold those units to people, so I wanted to make sure right. that it was That's my understanding. They'll retain ownership of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at this time, I'm going to make a motion that we approve this request, request up to an amount of $15,000. Any discussion on that motion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimous. And item I is a request for approval of the minutes for September 16th, 2014. Okay. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Griffith. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, that'll bring us to appointments to boards and commissions. Nursing Home Advisory Committee, we have one appointment. I nominate Jane Murray. Okay. Good for her. Any other nominations? Hearing none, I move we close the floor to nominations. Appoint Ms. Murray by acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Personnel Advisor Committee, we have one appointment. Which most we appoint? John Wait, Green and Tammy I'm sorry. Bowles? Sorry. I'm confused. <coughs> Two appointments. Two appointments. Two appointments. Two appointments. Okay. Forgive me, Mr. Hale. Sorry. Go ahead. Just make a motion we appoint John Green and Tammy Bowen 
That's okay. a personal voucher for me. Okay. Any other nominations? If not, I'd move we close the four nominations, appoint these two by acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And Juvenile Crime Prevention Council approve a change in membership. Mr. Okonski has been moved as a member of the business community. <coughs> We're just reassigning her appointment, is that right? That's correct. Okay. I would offer a motion that we uh, change Ms. Hmm. Okonski's designation as a member of the business community. Am I reading this right? Change her to a member of the business community. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. All in favor of that motion say aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Unfinished business. New business. County manager report. Don't really have anything to report, but I'm glad Jane Murray's here because the one thing I did have was I'd like to recognize Jane, Jane and I wanted to bring it to your attention that she recently was awarded the Public Health All-Star All Award by the North Carolina Public Health Association. Um, and this is uh, something that Jane did not volunteer for. It was something that her colleagues um, sent in an application and a narrative and uh, really wanted to recognize her because of the good work that she has done. And I will give her a lot of the credit for cracking the, the uh, environmental health backlog code over the last couple of months so uh, thank you very much Jane yes ma'am congratulations to you well deserved mm -hmm. okay nothing else I'd move we'll go into closed session under general statute 143 11 a5 real property purchase and 143 11 a4 economic development all in favor say aye, aye.
in open session, do we need to um, to, to redo committee assignments for? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and make yeah. this motion on this public hearing. Then. Okay. <clears throat> I'd, uh, I'd offer a motion to call for a public hearing on November 18th, 2014 at 7 p.m. regarding economic development incentive of $126,100 over a five-year period for pro project CHH based on a $6.5 million investment in Ardell County. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And a matter we need to attend to before we adjourn is the uh, appointment of Mr. Hout to the CARPO. Am I saying that right? The CRTPO. Yeah. If you could, why don't you make me the primary and then make Mr. Hout the alternate. All right. Alternate. I would nominate uh, Commissioner Robertson as our appointee and Mr. Hout as our alternate. All in favor say aye. 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 There's nobody, if nobody has any more business, I'll offer a motion we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Oh, what a bell. Mr. Pope, we appreciate